welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to share with you guys the beautiful Kate Zanat. Hi Kate. It's so great to have you here. She's pregnant. <laughs> what do you do? Four weeks. In four weeks. Yeah. I mean, how gorgeous is she as a pregnant oh, woman? Thank you. I wish I would have looked like you. Well, no, I mean, it depends on the day. This is nice life. <laughs> You're from, from England? Or Ireland. From Ireland. Yeah. And you look like a California babe with like your glow and everything. I just adore you and like oh. you a lot. I see you on set many times and we've chatted. We also share a lot of similar clients and I feel like we have a similar technique. So you've worked with Rosie. There's a really cute video out with her where she does Rosie Huntington's uh, makeup mm. and we've both worked on her and she also worked with one of my all time favorite actors. Is Nicole oh, she's the best. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. She is the best. I wanted to have you come on because you're pregnant and I get a lot of times questions, how do you make up when mm. you're pregnant? So we actually had you do your own makeup today. We did. And you created this gorgeous, beautiful kind of, I would call it like a summer bronzy or is it yeah. like... Yeah, I'm always your... calling it beachy. I think beachy is my look even in December. If I'm in Ireland, I'll still be beachy. I love it. So it should be bronzy. This is a good look as well um, for new moms because it's quick and easy. Yeah, it's no, okay. it's, it's not hard to do. It's super easy. Yeah. But if you want to see how we created this look on Kate, then keep on watching. What are the products you're using right now while you're pregnant? So one that I'm obsessed with is Osea, and this is called Vitamin C, is an SEA, so Vitamin C serum like the C, and it's seven different types of seaweed. So it's full of kind of like hyaluronic acid naturally. My thing is fragrance. If it smells of fragrance, you this just smells natural, which is lovely. And so it also does tighten the skin as well. Seaweed tightens the skin. Thank you. And also, I don't really like buy into eye creams all that much. I just massage it. I said the same yeah. thing today. I am the same I way. Go over my lips as well with mm -hmm. all my skincare. And it looks like super healthy, yeah. uh, glowy, and I think this will look really nice on the foundation. And it absorbs into your skin, which I love. I don't like to use a product that leaves like a greasy film on the mm -hmm. skin for myself or for a client. You know yourself, you yeah. then you put a foundation on top. It just sits they don't, it. Yeah, they don't mix. Then if they go on a red carpet with heavy lights or interviews, that kind of thing, and then it all starts to slide. Yeah. So if your skin feels like your skin after you've used the product and you can see a difference, yeah. then that's like, okay. I'm sold. Yeah. And my next one is what I'm obsessed with. This is the Cara Swamp. You guys can see the ingredients, but it's shea butter, hemp seed, jojoba, rose hip, camellia, um, meadow foam, whatever that is, I'm not sure what that one is, pumpkin seed, orange, vitamin A, C, D, E, and F. That's it. Just Nothing else. Yeah. So, so natural. you could eat this if you wanted to. Yeah. So again, I just take a small amount of this. Like a little goes a long way. So I go over where I get like a little drier. So onto the cheekbones. I try not to put too much under my eye here yeah. because the skin can't absorb it. So yeah. I keep it on the bone. And then I go a good bit onto the neck. So more on the outer parts of your face. Yeah, where I get a little bit dry and then sometimes just a little bit there, yeah. which I feel like makeup gets really cakey. Yeah. And then, this is more towards the end of the makeup. This is a balance and spray I use from Core Organics. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's nice because again, you can put it over makeup, it's not too greasy. It's a rose spray, it cools me down because I'm rusty. <laughs> I'll put a little bit on so you can see now what basically. I love a mist that you can use before your apply makeup and after. This is good, it sets your makeup as well, but it's not too heavy. Yeah. And then this, as you can see, I use this every day. This is for lips. This is for this lips. Is this is their butter mask, it's the only thing that saves my lips. It just absorbs in. And this is uh, full of shea butter as well, so maybe it's just like shea butter suits my skin. Yeah. You will start to like recognize, you know, I'm sure you do too, yeah. what works for your skin. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of the time I'll just do on my clients, if we're doing like a heavy eye, I'll just do lip liner and a bit of this. I love that. These are my three products that I use for my skin that I'm obsessed with. This one here is Beta Liberace. Have you heard of that? I've used, I actually have this in my gift bag in my master class in Austria. It's the best. It's, it's gorgeous. It's an Irish brand. Did you know that? It is. Yeah. It started off as an Irish fake tan and it's a great fake tan. That gives me a nice tan because I use Factor 90 on my face. So my face and neck is naturally a lot paler than my chest would be. Okay, so Clay Po Concealer. And um, this is my favorite concealer. I use this on every single client. I'm obsessed, I know you are as well. It was actually Elizabeth um, Hammer who introduced me to this brand yeah. and I've never looked back. Um, they're both Clay de Po. This one is quite like a silky 
um, matte texture. And, and this then, is the lighter for And this is, shade. yeah, this is great for underneath the eyes. And this is beige, which is a little bit of a lighter shade, which is nicer for under the eyes. So we'll take the body blur first. What I like about this is that, as you can see, it has like, like the body blur, it has that like reflectiveness in it, which yeah. is so nice. And you use your fingers? I do. Yeah. For this bit I do, for my concealer, I use like a sponge or a brush. I get this question a lot from like my viewers because yeah. a lot of people are like, how do you uh, match your face with your body? And this is exactly what you're doing right now. You just, if you don't want to have it, like, if you don't want to age, you wear a lot of sun cream, which means you're naturally going to have a paler face, you know? Yeah. So you just have to wear a darker color. You just have to step it up a notch. Yeah, sure. I don't think I've ever worn a foundation that matched my skin tone. You have to look at the person's chest and their body. You can't just be like, oh, that's their neck, that's them. And then they walk away and they feel like they have a white mask on, you know? So, as you can see, there's like a little built-in highlighter effect, which I love. Now we're going in with the Clay de Po in the shade Almond. And I tend to just use this straight from the tube, wherever I feel like I need more coverage, which is always under the eye for me. Um, around the nose, I get quite red. I do a little here because I just feel like a little extra coverage there is nice. Yeah. Same on the other side. And I have like tiny little kind of freckly things there that I like to cover to give me a more porcelain look. And then onto the chin. I don't really go too crazy on the forehead because I don't feel that I need it. Um, the less makeup up there, the better because I'm constantly lifting my eyebrows so you have those fine lines. And then I go in with the Artiste brush. These are synthetic brushes. But what I find about these is that if you use this, it doesn't absorb your product. Mm -hmm. So the Clay de Pau are like $80 for their concealers. Mm -hmm. They're the best, but I think that if you use a sponge, you're absorbing a lot of that product. Exactly. You know, you don't want to do this with this. You can just rub in and it's amazing. This is the liquid one. This is great for under the eye. This is in the shade beige. And again, I don't go all the way around my eye because my skin is thinner around here, so if I pack concealer all the way around, it's quite aging on me. This part of the skin is fine, it's nice and bright. My area is like just here. I need to brighten that up, that's where it dips down, that's where the darkness is. So I literally just keep the concealer in that area. It makes me look younger, less makeup, and brightens up, rather than just kind of doing this natural sweep everywhere. So it's kind of like you study your face, and the same for like when it's your clients. You're studying your face or studying someone else's face and really thinking like what do they need rather than just being like concealer here, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think if someone has really thick skin they can get away with more. I also just like to let it sit for a second. Yeah, okay. like that's my way of baking, just leaving because it'll <laughs> naturally oxidize and dry in. And then I go in with the beauty blender. And if I was had something to do, like my hair or something, I might like clip my hair up, do something and just leave that on for another five minutes and I think it works really well. Sometimes you put on concealer and then you blend it and you feel like it's gone and it hasn't done anything. So to really get it to seal in, you want to just, you're like, I'm more pressing it into the skin rather than like rubbing it away. So this is the powder I'm going to use just to set my concealer. Um, it's Hourglass and it's called Diffuse Light and it's more of a like translucent powder and compact. It doesn't show up as white so don't be scared by this look. I just like to take a little bit and then I set the powder or the concealer sorry underneath the eye. And as you can see it's like not heavy. If I wear a heavy powder underneath my eye I instantly have aged myself 10 years so I have to be really careful. Yeah. And I love that it almost has like a little sheen in it powder. It's gorgeous. It's a little yeah. sheen and it's a little brightening. It's nice and also it can go on to a lot of darker skin tones yeah. as well. And so just where I know I get really oily is around my T-zone. And what I like to do with this one as well is just take a little bit and just rub it through the brows just to prepare the brows for my brow products. And I don't have many brows so if it's too greasy there, yeah. I won't be able to get a decent brow, so I have to make sure that that's nice and set. This is the powder that I use to contour with, and this powder is called Dim Light. It does look quite light, like it wouldn't be able to give you a contour, but it gives you a beautiful structured look. And then I use the bronzer, so it's these two products together. And the bronzer is called Radiant Bronze Light, and Dim Light is the contour. So. 
I'm taking the same brush that I used for the pattern. Also, I like this because it's easier to carve out. And I'm four weeks away from giving birth, so the swell has definitely kicked in. <laughs> so I suck in my cheek on my definitely uh -huh. to do that now. That's a good tip for finding where you're... If you suck it in, you'll find it, but also if, that, if you're, you can't grasp that, if you press in here, this is your cheekbone, and if you kind of push down, you find underneath your cheekbone. So wherever you can feel the bone is where you're trying to make look more hollow, like it's an indent. Right. Oh, like Charlotte Tilbury mm, says. <laughs> I know, follow, follow. That's who you worked for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it just, what it's, if you have a paler skin tone, this is a great bronzer because if you go straight in with like a strong bronzer and you're trying to contour with it, you are going to look like you've been like slapped a little bit with the bronzer and heavy orange lines, but you can really create like definition with this product. And then 100% under here where this is yeah. kind of lovely. I don't know what's happening <laughs> down there. <laughs> you also can't really go wrong with this shade. And I do the nose as well. It's kind of foolproof. I feel like it works with everyone. I don't like my nose to be over contoured, but I definitely feel like I have a larger nose. So I feel like you can't just contour the whole face and leave the nose out. And also what's nice, you can go into the eyelids as well. You're just doing like a natural look. It's kind of like if you're shading or drawing a picture and you want to give some of their features, what you would do. But so I love products. using a bronze on the eyes. I think it's so yeah, it's great. so nice. It's so easy. It's my what I would do my, for my own makeup. Okay, now I'm gonna do a bigger brush and the bronzer. And I do like to kind of tap off my bronzer a little bit onto the mirror. This is why my mirrors are dirty, just so it's lighter and I don't get like too, get too much of a heavy look. But again, I'm going to start down with my jaw. So with the bronzer, I have quite a large face. I think like I'm not like small and structured. So I like to smile and then start the bronzer here. So it's in an opposite place to where I put my contour because I'm giving myself like a sun-kissed look. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like where the sun would naturally in your face. Exactly, at the highest points. Uh -huh. It makes it more sweet looking, I feel like. And like, don't forget about the ears and the forehead. You kind of go into the hairline a bit. And then again, I just pinch the brush and do a little bit onto the eyelids, which really helps me because I have a hooded eye. But a little goes a long way. And then now I feel like this is me human. Yeah. Before that, it's terrifying. <laughs> this is how I would like to wake up. This is beautiful. <laughs> I'll do the highlighter. I'm actually using my highlighter as a mirror. Um, this is the Lancome highlighter, which I think is gorgeous. It's called Jewel Finish Highlighter. And this one is Sparkling Peach. And then I, again, you're feeling where the cheekbone is. I'm just brushing like a little highlighter here. So now we just move the camera a little bit closer so people can see a gorgeous face mm -hmm. even more. God, no makeup on. <laughs> moving on to your eyebrows. So my brows, I would love to have a nice thick bushy brow, but I've got white thin brows and they thin out a lot on the edges here and here. So what I find works better for me is a brow gel that has kind of fibers in it that picks up on the really soft fluffy blonde hairs. And this Dior Show one is the best one that I found. It's quite dark as well. It's a lot darker than my hair color, but it gives me, it gives my face definition. And then to cheat little hairs, I use the Hourglass, the new brow products. It's um, a thin skinny one. one. Yeah. Um, I think it's just called Arch, yeah. and I use it in shade blonde. So I'm creating hairs with a lighter color, but the same color as my eyebrows. And then I'm using the brow gel, which is darker. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go in first with this one, and I just comb up. I I comb them up to make them look bigger, and then I fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. Like I just start off by drawing little hairs, which sometimes you can't see immediately. But it's like feathery strokes, so you're not really putting a whole lot of pressure onto the pencil or like digging into the face. You just want it to feel really light-handed. I'm kind of filling in the gaps, maybe. That looks gorgeous what you're doing. And then I go in with this because this one here, this is shade 002. I have a blonde one as well, but I find that this is better. I kind of take a lot of the product off. 
um, it just looks crazy if I don't do this. So I need to use as little as possible. And then again, I'm just like lightly picking up the hair. Oh, I can see immediately. Yeah, it looks, it's really nice. And I just use a tiny amount. That creates even hair like. Yeah, it kind of just brings the hair to life. It's nice, isn't it? I like this. I have to try this. I've never tried this product before. So basically I like to keep it easy with my eyeshadow. So I'm using a cream shadow by Charlotte Tilbury. This is a nice goldy color. Anything that's super easy to use is in what I like to do. So I'm just applying like a nice layer of it all over the lid. And you can blend this with your finger if you want to. I like to blend it with a brush, but it works just as well with your finger. And I get a clean brush to blend, just to create like a nicer kind of finish with the socket. I really love cream shadows, they're just so foolproof. And there's no drop down. Yeah, they're gorgeous. I love the finish, it comes on the eye as well. It's just so easy to do, it's so fast, and it's a nice look, and also it's hydrating. I do find that my skin will absorb a lot of powder really quickly and dry out and feel heavy and again I have a lot of lids and a lot of skin there so this feels like a drink of yeah. water for my lids yeah. and I do the same underneath the eye and then I do like to go in with my finger just to soften it I think that's also a really good tip for women with hooded eye or deep set eyes to put the shadow on the lower lashes and kind of like makes your eyes look bigger. It does. It really does. If you're highlighting this whole space, yeah. it looks better. And then with loads of, you can do liner inside if that's what you want to do. You can have, it's more of a smoky effect. Yeah. So technically this would be like a light, like summer smoky mm -hmm. eye. So now I'm going to go in with my Tom Ford eyeliner in brown. I just want to run this on the inside of my eyes. The easiest way I find is if I just nuzzle it in and I just look down and close my eyes. And I'm more using the side of the liner and bringing it up than like pointing the liner into my eye, which is a little bit scary. And it will come down a little bit onto your um, bottom lash, but that's okay. I think that's nice and suits me. I think it's a very sort of like, you know, sexy, peachy smoky eye look but not too heavy yeah if i was to put black with this it's quite severe i mean it would look beautiful in black but it's a different look yeah yeah then i'm going to use a little bit with my finger of the hourglass little pots of eyeshadow and i just do a little bit of this onto the ball of the eye it also kind of sets the cream eyeshadow it's pretty much a very similar color okay so i'm just going to curl my lashes this is the Sephora Lash Curler, I love it. I think it does wonders. Do you have a favourite mascara? I have two favourites. This one here, the Full Fat Lash by Charlotte Tilbury, I've used for years and I've never found one that's as good. I also love the Marc Jacobs one, mm -hmm. the original one. Mm -hmm. I've never tried that, but don't you find that that's the most common question you ever get as a makeup artist? I do, and um, honestly, I, there's a couple, like I like one or two cheap ones, um, I like the Lancome one, Maybelline do a good one, yeah. but I'll always go back to this. I just always find it a very personal preference for mascaras. I think it's depending on your lashes, what works for your lashes. Yeah. We all have such different lashes, so it's hard to say what's the best, and also how you want your lashes to look. Like, I don't want my lashes to look super heavy. I want them still to have a little bit of a feathery finish, you know? So I'm gonna use some Glossier Cloud Paint. If I'm not doing an eye, I'll also use this on the eyes as well, which I love. Yeah. So I just take a little bit of blend into my hand first. And then smile, and I like to keep out the apples on the cheeks. It just gives such a youthful, so nice. glowy finish. This is the Tom Ford Shade Illuminate. I take a little bit of that and I just do a tiny bit on the bone, like a really small bit, just for a little extra glow. Here's a little bit of lip gloss. My new obsession is lip gloss. It's in my purse right now. This is amazing. 
This isn't an ad for Hourglass, by the way. <laughs> I just love all the fun. I love everything you do about Hourglass. Yeah, uh, they are very good, though. This gloss is my absolute favorite. It has that kind of finished texture. It has this minty feel to it. And it doesn't leave you with like dry residue. It's still silky. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial with Kate. It was so great having you on. I sat next to you and I even learned a few new amazing new tips and tricks, especially the hourglass products you used. You also have a very calming energy, which I think helps as well. Oh, thank you so, so much. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, it was really fun having you. And so don't forget to follow Kate on her Instagram. I will leave all the information down in the description box and uh, we'll see you guys soon.